I'm back with another video and quick before we start please subscribe and like the video uh, you guys have been great about that so keep it coming it really helps me crank out content and today's content will be based around pressing and the defensive phase of the game so pressing the high block and we're going to look at two different formations and some typical movements and how they differentiate from each other in those two formations I will be looking at our 4-3-3 and a 5-2-3 which has become more popular over time in the past year or two and really we're going to look at different ways you can use both of them to solve different problems so the reason why it's important to have different ways to solve the same problem is to accommodate the players you have or neutralize a opponent's advantage and to just have more options to better solve the problem with what works with your team. So first off we're going to look at the 4-3-3 because that's something that more people have more experience with. Um, something that's been pretty common over the past couple years now. Um, really gone into favor. Especially we've seen Liverpool use it very successfully with the single pivot. So first off we see our front three and I divide the field with an extra division down the center just to um, make sure that the horizontal distances are easily measured and have one extra reference point just helps me uh, make it more realistic and show you the distances that are most accurate to a game situation. So we have the front three and the back four. So now the biggest thing when in comparison to the five two three is the problems are solved when pressing is are solved by the four three three through their horizontal shifting because you have this extra midfielder, the six in between the two attacking midfielders. So now what this will do is as we look so let's say red is building from the back so now the ball is played for the four and we have a classic Liverpool press which would be let's say number seven the winger cuts out the pass out wide with his cover shadow so here we are I'm just trying to give you a little visual to go along with this just trying to make it good there that's good enough and then so seven goes and then we have our attacking midfielder shift 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 and now even our nine can use his cover shadow and creep forward to create better access with our 11 11 shifting across as well and our back four we're gonna we're gonna keep our back four as is for right now just to not have so many moving pieces at once so here I'll draw the lines again each player is some here I'm gonna move the six over a little bit more so he's more covering the center backs in relation to the ball so he blocks the entry ball as well into number nine so each player about 15 between 12 and 15 yards horizontally the front three uh, have a greater space because of the wide areas to cover so they'll be a bit more closer to 15 maybe a bit more than 15 so this is the picture and now the free man is obviously the man we're we're using our cover shadow to eliminate generating positional superiority with our winger and but as it happens sometimes let's say he drops and the ball is played from him so he drops outside creates a passing angle and then takes a positive first touch and now the picture picture changes so the press is in a state of fluctuation meaning it's not quite broken um, but it does elicit a recovery response from the players to then be able to effectively have a chance at winning the ball back without the defense or the team in possession here progressing further up the field and for and actually breaking the press so now this is where the three midfielders comes into play and so now we'll shift so 
the nearsighted attacking midfielder will shift out wide. Now our six can shift inside to cover, and now our eight can shift as well. So now with very little movement from these players, now we have more of an ideal situation. I'm just going to move the back four a little bit just to make it a little bit more realistic. And there. And this player, he can even go on this side, depends um, how the defenders feel comfortable. So now the ball can't be played directly down the line. It'll be cut out. And these players, it comes down to their positioning of their hips and how vertically mobile they are. So now here's the picture with our attacking midfielder stretched out wide to go press. And now because of this third midfielder, we are able to hold down the middle of the field to block passes into the center and not become unbalanced. And so now the cover shadow changes from the seven. So now their job is preventing preventing the circulation pass, which will be able to keep the possession in one area, cover shadow from the nine as well, blocking the entry pass into the six, again, avoiding circulation. And now the weak side player, he has multiple angles of access, even though these passes are very low probability and he can even shift in more because he has so much time if the ball was to be played from one side of the field to the other in the opponent's third of the field that could even be like the perfect pass that you want a ball going across the middle uh, a longer pass under pressure so that's not the most important thing here he might drop a little bit and then we can see the diagonal compactness of the team as well just something I show before we move into the 5-2-3. So then diagonal compactness, and this pretty much limits the ability for the team in possession to play diagonal passing lanes into the center of the field and into more dangerous areas. So that was just a quick note on that. Maybe I'll do a whole separate video on diagonal compactness. When's it important? Why is it important? But that'll be for a future date, so this player maybe moved more inside, maybe more back to just create a more cohesive diagonal compact unit. So key takeaway here, 4-3-3, when in a state of fluctuation, it can be more advantageous because you have that third midfielder to help with horizontal shifting and it, it can still cover the center without displacing too many players and then trap the ball out wide. So now we're gonna switch over. Blue team's in possession and red team is now playing with a five, two, three. So I'm just gonna highlight it quick. I'll just highlight the front five players because these are the players, well, now more than the five, than the four three three, more so now the big change is the center backs, and now you'll notice in the five two three, the more pieces come into play with the wing backs, and now the positioning of the center backs will be much more important. So, with the initial press, we still have the same front three, and we have two midfielders behind them so the ball is played out and you can even continue the press the same way as you would in the 4-3-3 but it may become more stretched so let's focus on forcing the ball in the wide areas first so if the if the 11 uses his cover shadow to then press blocking the 8 now these players can shift across and cheating and creating these um, dynamic superiorities is more important. So now we have a 5-2-3 with cheating wing backs. They can cheat a little higher. So now the ball is played in behind. We have our center back covering who is deeper. He can come a bit wider. And then we have a plus one 
uh, superiority between our two center backs, two most central, most deep center backs, and then where the ball could be played to their fullback, and this is where the wide, um, wide pressing trap starts. So, very similar to before, players are here, and here I'll highlight them in yellow so we see. So our wing back jumps to press their fullback, our winger was pressing their center back, and now our one of our holding midfielders is pressing their attacking midfielder, and then our nine is occupying their six with his cover shadow and um, blocking off the circulation pass just as before. But now here's a situation on um, when the center backs become very important and one difference um, where the 4-3-3 deals with horizontal mobility when shifting, the 5-2-3 will deal with more vertical jumping from the defensive players. So what I mean by this is, I'll restart the picture, So what I mean by this is more vertical jumping. The first vertical jump is by the wing back jumping into the midfield line to press the full back of the other team. And then the next potential vertical jump could be, let's say our wingers. Mm, I'm just trying to think on the fly on the best way to show this, but here, let's do it this way. Let's say the team is trying to overload the half space on one side, so the winger, the fullback can advance a little bit. So now the picture is we have three blue players. I'll highlight them in yellow, occupying the half space. And this is kind of overloading the half space. There you go. And so the rules don't have to change too much, but now, so when the ball is played here, the wing back jumps, and now our holy midfielder, he can shift, he can shift. Now the picture's more or less the same, but if movement occurs, and let's say he drops and now and now the winger drops into the half space. Now the center back can jump into the half space and press the players. And now these players can slide across. They have plus one advantage. And now these wide center backs generally have more ability to jump in and join the midfield line than in a back four. And when you're thinking about this and implementing this, it's important that the wide center backs have more license to jump, whereas the most central defender, the most center back, he should not be jumping into the midfield drastically. He should be a cover player and protecting the space in behind because the center of the field is the most direct route to goal. And if play, if the opposing team is allowed to be let in behind in that direction, it can be very dangerous. But I think this is best shown with real match examples where players can be pinned to one side because now um, we have our opposing team 10. So if the play was switched quickly, he can jump into the midfield and the play would be shifted over and the opposing spaces will be covered. So and then just running through this quick very quick simple tutorial i'm thinking that i'll make a whole a whole video on the 523 system and positional play positional attack pos positional pressing and all those sorts of things in my next video or the video after um, but thank you so much for watching i hope this introduced you a little to the 523 when pressing and um, wide center backs jumping um, so they're really important concepts and really adaptable. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you for the next one.